This is example 364. And we will compare the response for an empty or a loaded vehicle. An automobile weighing 1,000 pounds empty and 3,000 pounds fully loaded vibrates in a vertical direction while traveling at 55 miles per hour on a rough road. And the road has a sinusoidal weight with an amplitude y feet and a period of 12 feet. Assuming that the automobile can be modeled as a single degree of freedom system with stiffness 30,000 pounds per feet and a damping ratio of 0 0.2, we would like to determine the amplitude of the vehicle when it is empty when it is loaded. When the vehicle is empty, it weighs 1,000 pounds. This will allow us to find the mass of the vehicle. The mass is equal to the weight divided by the gravity. The gravity is 32.2 feet over second square that give us a mass of 31. 0 0.056 pounds second square over feet. We have the constant of the spring, which is 30,000 pounds over feet. And then with these two values, we can calculate the natural frequency of the system, which is 30,000 divided by 31056 and then the natural frequency is equals to 31,08 radians over second. We have a damping ratio equals 0 0.2. Remember that the damping ratio is defined as the constant of the damper divided by 2 square root of Km. So we can calculate the damper of the car, which is zeta 2 square root of Km. And if we plug in the values, we get that the constant of the damper of the car is equal to 3. 86.09 pound seconds over speed. The vertical motion of the road is a amplitude of y sub zero sine of omega t. The car has a velocity of 55 miles per hour. So that velocity is equal to 5,280 to convert miles to feet and 3,600 to convert feet in seconds. So that gives me a velocity of 80.6 periodic. And we have a weight length of 12 feet. It means that the frequency is the velocity, which is 80.6 periodic divided by 12, and give me a frequency of 6.72 hertz. The circular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency, which is then 2 pi times 6 to 72, and give me a value of 42.24 radians over second. With this frequency and the natural frequency, we can calculate R, which is the frequency ratio. The frequency ratio will be then 42.24 divided by 31.08, and that gives me a value of 1.3589. Now that we have characterized our system, let's do a bit of our free body diagram to get the equation of motion. The mass 
and remember that our variable is measured from the equilibrium position. I don't draw the weight. Then I have the force of the spring. That since I have this placement in both ends of the spring, I have to write the relative displacement, which is x minus y. The same for the damper will be x dot minus y dot times the constant of the damper. And I force it in y direction and it gives me that the final equation of motion is m x to dot plus c x dot plus k x equals to c times y dot plus k y and y is just y zero sine of omega t and therefore y dot will be y zero omega cosine of omega t I substitute that into my equation of motion and then I can find what would be the external force which will be k y0 sine of omega t plus c y0 omega cosine of omega t. I can write that as a single function and that will be y0 k then I will have the amplitude of that single function will be k squared plus c omega squared square root of that times cosine of omega t minus an phase an. And I can find the response of that function because that will be y0 and what is in brackets will be my external fo force amplitude. So the response will be that amplitude divided by k times the magnification factor cosine of omega t minus phi minus another phase angle. I call that alpha. In terms of zeta and r, I can write that as square root of 1 plus 2 zeta r squared divided by the component that comes with the magnification factor, which is 1 minus r squared quantity squared plus 2 zeta r squared. And times cosine of omega t minus p minus alpha. The magnitude of that response, remember that cosine goes from minus 1 to 1, so the magnitude is that term right here, and that's the transmissibility factor. I can write in the relation between the response of the car and the amplitude of the waveform of the road as the transmissibility factor and that if I substitute my values for theta and r, theta being 0 0.2 and r being 1.35, I get a value for the transmissibility factor of 1.1312. That means that for that specific damping ratio and ratio of frequency, the amplitude of the vehicle is magnified by a factor of 1.1312, meaning that the amplitude of the response of the car is greater than the magnitude of the sinusoidal wave that describes the road. Let's now do it for the loaded car. So we have for the part B, the load is not 1,000 pounds, but 3,000 pounds. I can get the mass, which is that weight divided by the gravity, 32.2, and the mass gives me a value of 9317 pounds, seconds, square over feet. We are keeping the same constant of the spring, which is 30,000 pounds over feet. Then we can get the natural frequency of the system, which is square root of k over m and that gives me a value of 17.94 radians over second.
If we keep also the same damper, and the damper we calculated as 386.09 pounds seconds over feet, we can get a new zeta. Zeta, as you remember, is defined as the constant of the damper divided by 2 square root of km. I plug in the values, which is the 386.09 divided by 2 square root of 30,000 times 93.17 and that gives me a value of zeta equals to 0 0.1154. Notice that as soon as we increase it, the load, the damping of the system changes. In this case, we can see that it's less damping because we increase the mass. So that same damper of the car will work as less damping when we have more weight. The damping ratio is then the frequency that is given, 42.24, divided by the natural frequency that we just calculated. And we have a, the R is equal to 2.3537. We have the same free body diagram, the same equation of motion, and the same response. And then we have the same equation for the amplitude, which is x over y, the relations of the amplitude is equal to the transmissibility factor. Square 1 plus 2, say that's r squared divided by 1 minus r squared all the square plus 2 zeta squared. So I will input, input the new values for zeta, which is 0 0.1154, and the new value for r, which is 2.3537. and I get a new value for the transmissibility factor, which is 0 0.2489. As we see here, the transmissibility factor is less than one, so the amplitude of the vehicle in these conditions diminish by a factor of 0 0.2489. Then if we plug these values in a graph for the transmissibility factor, we see that the first value of 11, 13, 12 for an R equals to 1.3539 is represented in this point, and the new value is represented, which is 0 0.2489. So as you see here, when we have an increase in R, which is the frequency ratio, we have that the value for the transmissibility factor diminish.